LARCH is a suite of programs in a programming library for working with XF's data and related spectroscopies. Hi, I'm Matt Newville, and in this series of videos, we're going to introduce and help you get started using LARCH for XF's analysis. We'll start with the XAS Viewer application for visualizing and processing of XAF's data, including some approaches to Zane's analysis. Later in the video series, we'll do some simple modeling of and fitting of extended XAF's data. In fact, LARCH has capabilities for X-ray fluorescence analysis, X-ray fluorescence mapping, some diffraction capabilities, uh, but here we'll focus on the XAF's functionality and especially the XAS Viewer GUI for starting processing and visualizing of XAF's data. The XAF's, XAS Viewer GUI is here on, uh, in these two windows. There's a plot window and a main form window. Uh, I should say that the XAS Viewer application is very similar to the Athena program. If you're familiar with that, many concepts are borrowed uh, from Athena and, uh, and you'll see many similarities. You may see some improvements in some features and some things may be just different and some things may be uh, features that are yet to be uh, implemented well. If there's something that you find is missing or could be improved in this application, let me know either in the comment section or by some other means and we'll see if we can improve those uh, features. To launch this program, you, you select the uh, XAS Viewer uh, icon from the from the Larch folder on your desktop. When you install Larch, a desktop folder called Larch will be put on your desktop uh, full, uh, and, and will contain several applications. Uh, the XAS Viewer is the most useful for doing XAPS analysis. And clicking on that will bring up these two windows. Uh, so let's get started with using this and we'll start by reading in some XAPS data. So we'll start with uh, some transmission XAPS data on say iron metal foil. I'll, here's some data here, I'll, I'll select that. Large can read in a variety of file formats. We'll talk about, as I'll talk about that as we're doing this. So bringing in that, bringing, reading in that file brings in this uh, dialog window for reading in data where we want to select the X-array as energy. Here it says it's in electron volts. If the data was in KeV or in degrees, it could be converted here, at least for most data sets. Um, and then, then for the Y array, we'll want to construct mu of e. So that would that would be minus log of the transmission over the ion chamber. This data set, let me show you the file. This file has simple uh, hashtags to mark header information and then three columns of data. Energy, I0, the monitor ion chamber, and then the transmission ion chamber. So this is a very simple file of just transmission XFS data. And it looks like that when we take minus log over transmission and I0. You can select any of the columns or array data here. Uh, and so now that we've selected this, I'll hit OK. That will import this data. Here we see the data, the name of the data set or the name of the group. We'll be using the term group and data set interchangeably and then a plot of that data. Of course, we we'll want to be able to read in more than one spectra at a time. So let's go read in those. Uh, let's go read in the iron oxide data uh, for the three different principal oxides that we have. Here we'll say, okay, now it's remembered that the energy is in the column is labeled energy and the transmission I0. So it's remembered this for all of them. Again, these text files are all consistent. Energy I0 and trans, I trans are the names of the, are the labels of the columns and so the names of the arrays. And I'll hit okay and it will read in the, all three of those. So we now have four data sets for the different uh, metal oxides. Uh, and I can select all of them, or I can select none of them, or I can just check here. And when I select these, then I can go over to this section and say plot selected group. I can plot the one that's highlighted, that's the current group. Or I can plot the selected groups here, or I could include the metal foil, select that and plot them all together. And here they're plotted on this plot. Let me show you uh, some of the features of the plotting window there uh, that are quite useful. So to zoom in on the plot, you simply click and drag, uh, and you can do that multiple times to zoom in on, the, say, the Zane section. And here we see the four traces for the metal oxides. I'll zoom in even more, and you see the really the distinct energy shift with oxidation state. 
with these four uh, spectra. From this legend uh, in the plot window, you can click on any of the legends and that will toggle whether that spectra is shown or, or not, um, which can be very useful if you bring in multiple spectra but want to then see which ones are most alike. Um, in addition, you can uh, save an image of this of this current plot to a PNG file, or you can hit Control C to copy it to the clipboard and then paste it into your favorite presentation program. You can also use the print stuff to uh, to send it to your printer or a PDF file. From the options menu, you can also configure this plot, which gives you a wide range of options in how to alter this plot. That brings up this dialog here, from which you can say, change whether the grid, the backing grid or the legend is shown at all, or the top right axes, so on, so that you can customize that plot to make it a presentation quality graphic. You can change the colors, what the line styles, um, you can increase the thickness for all the traces, uh, which is often useful for presentations, and you can change some of the uh, traces to be shown with, a, with different symbols. Um, you can make and you can make the line solid but have a thickness of zero and then the, only the symbols will be shown and so on. Uh, you can change the color scheme uh, for example you can make a dark color scheme you can change there's a there's a whole range of these one that's probably might be particularly useful is the white background puts the background in the frame to pure white which is useful for copying and pasting into presentations um, in addition, you can change the ranges uh, that are shown for the data ranges or the, uh, uh, the margins of the plot, and you can also here set the, the titles and, and the, uh, the titles and the labels uh, and then and say where you want the plot to be shown, whether it's force it to be in the upper right or so on, and click on the draw a frame around the legend and so on. There's many many options for working with the plot menu uh, uh, and to customize this to make beautiful presentation quality graphs. You can also see from here that if you right click on the, on the plot screen, you can un undo the zoom all the way and you can save an image from there as well. So there's many options available from there. Uh, but let me show you now. So that's, I'm going to let me show you now uh, some of the other features of how to working with groups. So one thing that I mentioned earlier was that you can read an Athena project file. So let's go do. Let's go see what that looks like. So here is some. Here's an Athena project file with several spectra in it. So I will open that. Um, th so then again, the, the Athena project file will have several. Uh, spectra in it. They've already been reduced. That is converted to mu of e. And I'll just say, let's read in these. You could say select all and import them all. Let's. Have, I'm not sure how many they're all. Let's just import them all, just to see how fast we can import spectra. It goes pretty quickly. And now, if I select none, I can also go over here to this one. I'll, I'll make this a bit wider so we can read those. Uh, file names and I'll right click and say select all below and that will now select all of the spectra below. If I plot them all, um, they all actually look decent. None of them are wrong. So what you might want to do in a typical analysis it would be to merge all of these. So if we, let's do that. Let's go go to the group menu. You can do many things with from the group menu to working with Data. You can remove selected groups, but here I'm going to say merge selected groups. So this will bring up this little dialog to match the energy to the first one in the list. You could select a different one if you wanted. That's usually not a huge uh, difference. And then you can give it the, a name. So here I'll like sort of truncate this and say it's a merge of 24 data sets. I'll leave that in there and we'll merge that. And that comes, that's now down at the bottom. And we may want to then so reselect all of these, select all below, except that one, and then we can remove the selected groups. So remove 24 groups, yes. So now we have a data set that's got the metal oxides and that one data set. 
So if we select all of them and plot them together, we can zoom in and simply see which oxidation state that data set is, has. And it looks like it's pretty close to pure, uh, pure three plus. So that's, that's a simple uh, approach to analysis. Um, uh, and then we could save this file. But, let, for, but I want to show you one more thing of reading in, uh, reading it for reading in data. I should say we are close to, and we can now start to read in data from spec data files and from the Bliss HDF5 format used at ESRF. Um, if you have data in that format, that can also, like Athena, store many spectra in one file. We can read those in now, or at least we're working on that. So if you're interested in that, give it a try and let us know how it works for you. Right now, though, I'm going to read in some uh, XFs data that was measured in fluorescence mode just to show uh, how one can work with columns of data. So here, this data was collected in fluorescence mode, so it didn't have a good iTran, so it couldn't figure out what to use for the column names. You need to be able to like work with that. But here we want to not have uh, minus log. This is fluorescence data. And I have a channel that's called iron iron uh, Ka, which is the sum of the uh, sum of the iron channels for the different detectors. But many people will have data data sets where the sum has not been done and you'll want to say you want to sum up multiple channels from the from a multi-element fluorescence detector. So for example, this file has something like 40 columns where the where the counts for iron K alpha from the different MCAs were collected separately and here we might want to add them together. So here we can collect this, select this select columns to sum button and this will bring up a dialogue here with the names of the arrays and then we can select uh, which which columns we want to add together. So I'll select these MCA spectra uh, and call that here, I'll say iron sum. So we can that will save those together. There's other options for how to select which columns to add together but I'll save that and now this comes up in the dialogue box as the last thing on the list. Uh, so that we, we could import the data that way. I should say, as we're doing this, um, I'm reminded as I look at that data, if I go back here to sums of columns, we also have for this data, dead time correction factors and output count rate. So when I did the sum, it did not do the dead time correction uh, correctly for this data set. I only added the columns together. So if you, if you need to do, doing the dead time corrections, even with columns of data that are available, is sometimes tricky or it's a little bit more math than just adding things together that can be done in a GUI. So it's better to do that either with a pre-processing script or uh, or with a known data format. And if you have a data if you have a data format, either talk to your BMO scientist or contact me about how we could make a script for you to easily do the dead time corrections. So again, I can read in this data uh, here, and now we have that data set um, from fluorescence data. You can see the background is a little bit different, or the, getting the background is a little bit different, but now we can zoom in and look at that data more closely. I'll get rid of this set, and that looks like, for example, that data set here, the biotite uh, data, looks more like it's more reduced than, than the previous data set. So those are the two data sets we read in. Um, so that's a, that's a quick start for uh, how, how the um, how XAS Viewer works with data and groups. We could save this project as as a uh, as a test project. Uh, yeah, so I want to overwrite that. Um, that w then we could read that back in. Uh, and um, I should. I also want to show you one more thing before we get to the uh, data or the installation and uh, steps, and that is all of the steps that we did are actually recorded. I said that at the very beginning, I said that Lunch is not only a, a suite of applications, but also a programming library. And all of these steps that we took for this, in this analysis session are actually recorded as code that can be run as Python code, um, either from the large, a large interpreter here or uh, read in and working with 
uh, from Python. So it's not necessarily uh, beautiful looking code, but it is complete. And it's all the steps that we did to, to make that uh, data set work. In fact, so here's, here was, is where we merge 24 groups um, can be done programmatically. So all of these steps can be done um, from a Python program. Uh, and here are the data sets listed that we have. So the for the iron for the FE203 data, there are the there are the arrays of, of data that we took. Um, so you can pro you can access those and process with those uh, to so do more complex analysis steps or write batch scripts to analyze or process uh, hundreds or thousands of data files at a time. Um, so let me show you the installation steps or give you a hint of the installation steps. So if you go to the large web page, um, there's an installation. Actually, if you Google X-Ray Large, you will find this page. And here are installers for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and also uh, batch scripts if you're interested in installing Large in a, not just in a standalone uh, manner, but into an existing environment. These, these binary installers will install a full Python package in your home directory, uh, and it should be entirely in your home directory, so no matter what uh, account you have or privileges you have on your computer, you should be able to install Larch yourself, and we'll write this folder uh, Larch to your desktop with the icons to start these applications. Um, the installation is, can take a while because it will download and up, run updates for many Python packages, giving you a whole programming environment with Python. Um, so it can take a while, but it will work for, for your computer. Um, so these are just the first steps uh, in to get started using Larch. I hope that was helpful. And this is also just the first in the series of videos to get to introduce Larch and its many uh, aspects for, for working with XAPS data. In later videos, we'll, we'll cover essentially all of the tabs for all of the analysis tabs in uh, XAS Viewer and, and work on some more uh, analysis steps. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them uh, below or, or contact me later, and I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you.